Hello, welcome to Diversity Tree, a project looking at how to diversify our woodlands to increase resilience. I'm Ruth Mitchell, the leader of this project, but it's a collaborative project um, that's run by the James Hutton Institute with collaborators from Bangor and Birmingham Universities, the Royal Botanic Gardens Edinburgh RSPB and the Woodland Trust, and collaborator and um, project partners, the Forest Research and Nature Scott. So this is the overall aim of Diversity Tree. The project's looking at how to increase the resilience of our current and future woodlands by increasing the diversity of tree species composition. We acknowledge that genetic diversity is also important, but there are other projects within the Treescapes programme that are looking at that. So we're focusing on tree species composition. We want to work across a range of scales, and you can see we've written from microbes to mines. And this is to underline the fact that not only are we working across a range of biological scales, but we're also including the human aspect in this, which is very important. And we want to understand the methods to and the impacts of diversifying our tree species composition. So this slide here currently shows the sort of pictorially the background to diversity tree. So currently our semi-natural and commercial woodlands are often dominated by just a few species. We know that our trees are threatened by a range of pests and pathogens and climate change. And if they particularly impact these dominant species, then that could have a major impact on our woodlands. However, in a more diverse woodland, you might have the same range of pests, pathogens or climate change impacts, but that would only impact a few species. So diversity tree is all about how we move from woodlands that are dominated by just a few tree species to a more diverse woodland. And there are many ecological reasons why a more diverse woodland might be more resilient. And we're focusing on a couple. So firstly, a more diverse woodland might deliver a greater range of functions. We know that in crop systems, cro uh, systems with a greater range of crops have greater um, functionality. There's a greater range of predators, which offers a greater biological control. But we've no idea if the same is true in our woodlands. Secondly, in a more diverse woodland, different tree species would be able to substitute for one another potentially. So if one tree species is lost, others may be able to fulfill a similar ecological functioning. However, if we're going to transition to a more diverse woodlands, humans and how we manage those woodlands are critically important. And the managers and stakeholders of these woodlands need to have the knowledge to know how to make that transition. So diversity tree has identified four challenges, and I'll take you through these now. So firstly, we want to understand how woodland managers and other stakeholders understand woodland diversity, particularly across a range of different scales. So diversity at the plot scale, at the stand scale, at the landscape scale. What tree species do they think are critically important in terms of making woodlands more resilient in the future? Our second challenge is looking at how more diverse woodlands might increase ecosystem functionality. And here we're specifically looking at the leaf microbiome. So the hypothesis is that in a more diverse woodland, you've got a greater microbial diversity on the leaves and that that might then lead to um, greater resistance to pathogen infections. There's already evidence that the leaf microbiome might be important in, re in resisting certain tree infections. Thirdly, we want to see how the diversification of woodlands can provide functional redundancy. So this is where tree species can substitute for one another. So if tree species are lost within a woodland, how do other tree species continue to support the biodiversity within that woodland and continue to provide the same level of ecosystem functioning? However, critically, we need to know how to implement diversification. And we're specifically going to focus on four management strategies. So we're looking at continuous forestry cover as our first one. Secondly, we're looking at the introduction of um, novel planting regimes or planting species. So thinking about non-native species, but also about species that are maybe native to the whole of the UK, but not considered native to any given region within the UK. Thirdly, we're looking at natural regeneration. And fourthly, we're looking at methods to increase the microbiome and microbial diversity. And we'll look at how all of these four strategies 
might be able to increase diversity and resilience. And then, of course, obviously, we're thinking about how to communicate these strategies. So we're going to focus on conifers, specifically um, Scots pine, our native conifer, and Sitka spruce, the most important um, commercial tree species in the UK. But we will very much be assessing the transferability of these results to other woodland types. So if you want to know more, please do follow us on Twitter, email me or look at our website. Thank you very much.